Grove, or Mike Grove, excuse me, ready to kick it off. And Gallion has the deep backs. Looks like Andrew Mason is back there. And also uh, North is back there. And a couple of up-baked backs as well. So we are just about ready for football again. Uh, very, very warm here tonight. In fact, I think that may have hurt the crowd here tonight. There's not a really big crowd on hand here, as you would expect for this uh, county rivalry. A lot of people are standing around the uh, fences right now. But, uh, and especially here you know, for the Galleon Tigers. I know uh, the community of Galleon is feeling really good about themselves after the, the win last week. So you'd figure they'd bring out a lot of people right now. I think everybody's doing that the bluff kick thing this exactly. year. Exactly. So. Grove bluffs it. Now Mike's backing up, ready to kick it off in the more conventional style. And we are ready for high school football on WQEL. Bucyrus, the first choice of North Central Ohio for sports. And it's finally the official blows his whistle. And there's Grove's approach. He will kick the ball left foot. It's going to come up a little bit short on the far sideline. It's bobbled, picked up at the 20-yard line, giving ground 25. Going backwards and going to go down is the return man. Might have been north. And we'll wait till they get it all on pile. And it was north who made the return. So Galleon comes out first offensively. They will start at their own 15-yard line. Actually, it looks like they lost a couple of yards on the return. And the quarterback will be Matt Ruth. We will have Shandon North and Ben Newman in the backfield behind him. And we'll send a receiver out to the left at his step row. Tight at the right end is Farina. And the backs are in the tee on first down. The ball is handed off to North. He cuts back. He gets to the line of scrimmage and falls forward up close to the 20-yard line. Pick up of, we'll give him about four yards on the play. So make it a second down and six. Nineteenth brings it up under center, splits the receivers this time. Again, he hands the football off this time. North going to the left, and again, he gets to the line of scrimmage and is met by some good tackling. One of the problems Colonel Crawford had last week was the uh, the tackling. They weren't wrapping up for real good, and uh, they've done a good job on the first two downs so far. Pick up another two yards. Basically the same play, just going in two, diff uh, two directions right there. North uh, you know, going to his right the first time, and then the left to the second time. And uh, now, you know, for the Colonel Crawford Eagles, I think it'd be real good for them defensively after last week's loss. Come out, get the stop right here, a three and out, and then, uh, you know, try to make, put something together offensively right off the bat. Step row comes as a receiver to the near side. They keep North and Newman in the backfield behind Ruth, and he's going to keep the football. He does hand the football off. Getting outside is North. He got tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Falls forward for the first down, though, and if he hadn't been tripped, he'd have been gone. Because he got out, brings it out to the 27-yard line, pick up a six and a galleon first down. Yeah, that's good, Mr. Up at the line. He would have been off for a long game. This time we got all kinds of, oh, no flag, but now a flag goes down late. There was motion earlier, movement early, and the official, I think, each official was waiting for somebody else to throw the flag. That was Newman that time, the ball carrier. And he did bring it out to the 38 or 39-yard line, but I think they're going to bring that one back on an offsides on Galleon. And yeah, it will be a motion penalty on Galleon, so Eagles will accept the first penalty of the night. I think everybody was actually in a wing. Now they go with the two running backs as Ruth again hands the football off. And oh, no running room at all that time for uh, Again, it was... North. Or check that new back. That's Newman that time, excuse me. Ben Newman did get the ball and only gets about a yard. So second down and 14. You're going to say no gain on the play. Up high. Just go for the legs. Ruth is going to keep the football as he rolls out. Now he fires the ball over the middle. It's a low pass. Ball is bobbled and not hung on to by Newman. He was wide open but just couldn't hang on to it. Over on the uh, closest man of the coverage was uh, Cochran, who almost came up with the interception off the bobble. They often, he tried to just drop a, a lob pass to him and ended up uh, short-armed it. Third and 15 for the Tigers. Their first third and long. Uh, straight back in the pocket is Ruth. Now he's rolling the side. He's got the option to run. He's going to fire the ball. It's going to be complete on the sideline, but bumped out of bounds. Here's the receiver, Jared O'Leary, well shy of the first down. Or check that it was not O'Leary. It was Farina. And Gallion will have to punt the football away. It's a good defensive stand for there for the Colonel Crawford Eagles. They got to feel real good about themselves. Take it left to go first period. No score is Gallion ready to kick the ball away. There, a punter is Andy Cochran. Remember, back deep. Excuse me. Ruth is the punter, and Ruth gets kind of a line drive away. It'll hop in front of Cochran, and he's wisely going to let it roll. And oh, now it's touched by a Gallion. Oh, wow.
Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, almost a mistake. Dustin Gabriel, for some reason, reached down to try to pick it up, and the ball went off his fingertips, and luckily, I think Cochran fell on it. Yeah, coach is going to talk to yeah. him right <laughs> away. Uh, it, was rolling, it was just about dead. Exactly. And on their own 36-yard line, they'll go with the uh, straight eye backs this time with a wing out to the left as well. Steiger under center on first down. He's going to turn around, hands the football off. That is uh, Mike Grove. And Mike gets it across the 40, out to the 41-yard line. Nothing fancy, just a good power running, but there is a flag down. And it's going to be on Colonel Crawford. So take out the about a uh, three, four-yard gain, and it will cost him five yards. Yes. So they'll have a first, oh, first down and 18. It must have been from the point of the foul, I guess. As bizarre as that can be, that would be a hold then. Motion for Colonel Crawford as Cochran goes across the field. Steiger turns around again, hands the ball off to Grove. Mike coming to the near side this time, and he is cut down after he crosses the 30, out to about the 31-yard line. So it does get five yards. It'll make it second and 13. To try to have to get 10 yards, always struggled a little bit with that. They'll split wide receivers this time. Straight back to throw is Steiger. He fires the ball. It's going to be up right through the arms of... The intended receiver on the far side, Tim Greenick, usually a pretty sure-handed, but again, one of those situations where he was wide open. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. He was very wide open. Uh, Steiger ended up throwing a pass to him, while not bad, but a little bit low at the knee and kind of wobbly. And uh, Greenick, I think, you know, just kind of you know reached down. He was a little bit lazy in the way he reached for that football instead of really good down play for Colonel Crawford. It is third and 14 there at their own 31-yard line. Steiger has the backs in the eye this time, and he will keep the football as he drops back. Play a little play action, get some rush ball, but he batted up and almost intercepted. Great uh, defensive play made by Galleon's Ben Newman. And the intended receiver was Benow, and he couldn't come up with it, so Colonel Crawford will punt on their first possession. Like you said, a great play right there from Ben Newman. He just kind of sat back there, laid in the waitings a little bit, and watched Steiger's eyes. Steiger really never took his eyes off of Benow on that play, and when he tried to throw that ball up, it was a very easy situation for Newman to step in front of it. Grove is the kicker. He's got plenty of time. Gets a line drive kick away. It's going to take a big hop. Gets away from Stepro and goes out of bounds. It ended up being a pretty nice kick down to the 26-yard line. No Ruth. We'll hand the football off, and getting tough running room is going to be Shandon North as he came to the right side. Only going to pick up about three yards. Yeah, again, North, a power runner. He's, you know, uh, probably won't get an opportunity. Tigers just to continue to do what they're doing right here, just simple power running plays. In motion goes Farina. The ball is going to be handed off. Big hole this time up the middle for uh, uh, Newman. And he does get it out to the 40-yard line, so that's the second Tiger first down of the night as he picks up 11. Yeah, good play right there, and it's a great job from the offensive line as they uh, just blew a good hole open right over the center. And Newman Fur will split out to the left. They keep uh, Farina in the ballgame. Now they put him in motion across the field, and the ball is going to be kept by the quarterback. He flips the ball out complete this time to one of the running backs, I believe, out of the backfield. Yeah, that was North. Was it North? Okay. And he gets it into Tiger into uh, Eagle territory at the 48-yard line. So nice pickup. Apps first down. Good play for the Tigers. So it brings up a first down in Eagle territory. Ball is handed off right up the middle. Goes north, and he's gone. It'll be a uh, took that Newman going to be the one that's to the end zone around five on the end there, and he goes in from the 48 yards out. Once he got through the line of scrimmage, nobody could catch up to him. And another big play that does uh, hurts Colonel Crawford. Absolutely, and like you said right there. Uh, what it was was, you know, good speed from Newman. Newman, like I said, a little bit faster of the guys coming out of the backfield. He just hit the hole big, and I'll tell you what made it happen, though. Offensive line up the middle. Same with the 11-yard gain he had a little bit ago. It was the center and guard really breaking a hole open for him, and a big one at that. Newman. And he kicks it toward the far sideline. It'll be fielded over there. Now it's dropped, and Galhain does fall on it. Jamie, or Jamin Rayburn falls on it. And all kinds of trouble picking it up. So the Eagles down by a touchdown. Will bring it out and start at their own 27-yard line, we'll call it. Again, very important for the Colonel Crawford Eagles not to shoot themselves in the foot right now. No penalties, no turnovers. Just get a nice, solid drive here. Try to do some power running up the middle. You got a whole lot of backs out there. You can keep sending fresh guys at the Galleon Tigers. Try to keep that going. And, uh, like I said, pick up yards at a time, and you never know when something might be able to break loose. Tiger stays at quarterback as Cochran and West in the backfield behind him. But Cochran in motion now. 
And they turn around, hand the football off to Grove. He sprints to the outside. He's got the 30, head down 35, and gets it out to about the 36, 37 yard. That time able to get a little bit wide and picks up about eight yards. That's a good play right there from the Colonel Crawford Eagles standpoint. And that was good running from Grove. I really think he was supposed to go off tackle on that play. Didn't see anything there, but he realized that the, the quarterback for the Galleon Tigers didn't step up and help with run defense. So he was able to bounce it out to the outside. And he had a lot of running room as well. By the time that cornerback put his arms around him, he just drove his shoulder right into him, pushed, picked up about three more yards on top of what he had already gained. Second down, they're calling it two from about the 36-yard line. Grove again comes in motion, this time toward us. As the ball is handed off, bouncing to the outside, and getting a big hole. This time is going to be Roger Perkins. His first carry is good for a first down. Once again, good power running right there from the Colonel Crawford Eagles. Expect a lot of that out of uh, the Eagles in this game. <laughs> They will split Cochran as a receiver out to the left this time. Also, Greenick is out there. Backs are in the eye. The ball is handed off. Grove getting to the 40-yard line. He's the midfield, and the Galleon territory almost broke it as he got it down to the Galleon 44-yard line. Pickup of 17 on the play. And get Colonel Crawford not running their... Uh, call it double wing, wishbone, whatever you want to call it. They're just going to a standard IBAX. Exactly, and it's working out very well for him. Grove is doing a nice job being patient in the backfield. Right there, a great hole broke open from the offensive line. Grove was patient enough to wait for the hole to develop, then exploded through it. And then, like you said, poor tackling downfield by the Galleon Tigers. They were just barely able to trip Grove up. Second first down for Colonel Crawford as, again, Grove comes in motion. And this time the ball is, excuse me, yeah, this time we just hand it off. Again to uh, Grove, excuse me, it was uh, Cochran in motion. Grove got the just short yardage, only got about a yard or so down to the 43-yard line, so second down and nine. In right. Split to the left, Colonel Crawford is going right to left here in the first period. Cochran splits it right in. Again, the backs are in the eye. Uh, Steiger will drop back to throw this time. He's going to be hit and downed in the backfield all the way back at the 49-yard line, making the initial hit was uh, Brian Gilbert. And had a little help as well, but it'll be a loss of six on the play. And now it's third and long for Colonel Crawford. That's good play. He was able to just sneak right through him and got his hands on Steiger before he could set up and even try to make a pass. They bring a wing and a wide receiver to the left as back to throw. Steiger, a blitz is on. They set the screen pass up. The ball is complete to Grove, but a good somebody stayed home for Galleon and drops Grove for a loss back to the 45-yard line. It'll be a loss of two yards on the play. Big credit goes to Cody Furr on that play, coming up as a defensive back, making the hit on the play. That ball was still in the air and first saw it happen. He ended up sneaking through the offensive linemen who were supposed to be out there blocking for him and made the hit right as that ball was caught. But, uh, you know, the offensive linemen got caught into the position where they were watching the ball instead of watching for blockers. That's always a big mistake. So the drive that started out well will end up with a punt. The kick is on the way. Greenick doing the kicking this time. He gets it down to about the 30-yard line. And it's Matt Ruth on the return, and he will go down right at the 30-yard line. So only got about a two-yard return out of it. Again. They bring the receiver to the near side. That's Cody Steele who is in there. As Ruth under center, he will hand the football off and breaking some tackles and getting it up is going to be Shannon North. And there we saw some poor tackling by Colonel Crawford that time. Sure did. He was able to slip through a lot of tackles and was actually kind of jumping through tackles. North Receiver off to the left as Ruth will have the backs in the tee. He's going to hand the football off. First man through. That would have been Newman. And Ben gets a couple of yards. And we'll split the receiver. Steele going out to the left. And Farina, a couple of, now goes more of a wing back. As Ruth is going to hand the football off to North. He stopped at the line of scrimmage, and he's going to be stopped for a loss of about one back to the 35 yard line. Lost a two on the play. And good line play by the Eagles that time. And Gallion will have to kick it away. That's great line play from the Colonel Crawford Eagles. Obviously, uh, learned a little bit of a lesson from the last drive. Obviously, they got blown off the line on that play. And the Gallion Tigers were able to put a touchdown on the board as a result. That time, made sure that they held their positioning well. The linebackers were able to come up and make big sticks. Cocker and Gabriel back deep, and now Colonel Crawford is going to take a timeout. We've got the punter, and again, it's Gabriel and Cocker and back deep for Colonel Crawford. There's the snap, Ruth. Plenty of timeout. Somebody breaks through. Nice high, high kick, and it'll be fielded by Gabriel at the 30-yard line. 35, trying to go outside. A flag goes down. 
And so does Gabriel at about the 35-yard line. Got two, three flags. <laughs> Imagine it's going to be a clip or a hold or something to that extent. Now, one of the officials has a dark yellow. You know, Bucyrus wasn't he didn't have any penalties. That was good for them. But they don't have a big play offense. They can just explode with one. So the more field they have to march, the worse. On first down, Steiger handed the football off and gave it, I think, John West. Yeah, John West is the ball carrier. And he brings it out close to the 24-yard line. So pick up about six yards on the play. That'll help us out. It's the Grove in the backfield right now. He is the eye back. And Steiger under center. I think he bobbled the football. Sure it's loose. And, and who's and got the it? The Tigers were in good position yeah. to pick that ball up. There was a good dive right there from John West, but I don't think he was able to pick it up. But somebody did for the Eagles. Yeah. Colonel Crawford does keep possession. Getting up uh, off the very bottom of the pile was John West. So we'll give him the credit. But he loses a couple yards on the play. And he'll bring up a third down and six now. As Colonel Crawford... Faces another third down. They are 0 for 2 on the third down so far here in the first period. And we may not get another playoff as the clock is winding down. And we have played one period of football here at Heisey Park in Gallion. It's Gallion Tigers 7, Colonel Crawford Eagles nothing. Serving the Cyrus. 24 yard line, Steiger. Going to take a short drop. He fires the ball. He's got a man coming across the middle. That's Greenick. He's got the first down as he brings it out to the 38 yard line. Just a nice slant pattern. Pick up a 13 on the play and a Colonel Crawford first down. No, oh, that was a great play right there. Steiger just drilling uh, Greenick right in the numbers. Simple crossing pattern. Uh, you know, this so slants while they're the very easy to run for receivers. They're very complicated to defend for defensive backs because you can put your body right between the ball and, you know, the defensive back so he can't get that hand on it. It's a fantastic play. I don't understand why teams don't run it more. Steiger with the first down puts a man in motion. That's Cochran. He's still got the football. He's going to get wrapped up and dropped in the backfield as breaking through is Jeremy Sipes. Be a loss on the play. Uh, just about a yard on the play, back to the 35, lost two on the play, so it'll be second down. His motion, and then by the time he tried to get back into the play, it was too late. Greenick is the receiver to the near side, this time the ball is handed off straight up the middle, breaking through, getting under the secondary ball, pops loose, and Gallion will have the recovery, nice gain, first by John West, he brought it out close to midfield, and the ball popped loose, and Gallion recovers it back at their own 47-yard line, so the first turnover in the ball game. Yeah, that one really hurts Colonel Crawford because that was a great run yeah. right there from John West. Um, you know, really took it right up the gut very nicely, broke a couple tackles, and then he had a couple of guys, you know, get on top of him, and what it, what it was was he was carrying the ball in his right hand, and one of the guys who was on him was able to just lift that hand up and, dry, you know, hit that ball from underneath him, and he popped it right out of his arm. It was just a great defensive play right there from the Galleon Tigers. So Matt Ruth at his own 48-yard line will bring a receiver to the near side. That is going to be Cody Furr. Backs are in the tee. Also a wing out to the right. Ball is handed off. And it's going to be Newman. And he got absolutely nowhere. May have lost a half a yard on the play. Not going to do anything wide yet, though. Everything has been pretty much a yep. tackle, tackle. They bring a man in motion. The back to throw is Ruth. He's got the time. He's got his man. It's going to be complete on this near side to North. And North will be out very close to the first down marker before he gets run down. Yeah, he's going to end up getting that first down. That's just the same play that they ran to North a little bit earlier. Um, you know, it's Ruth ro rolling out to his left side, throwing the ball across his body. North coming out about five yards and doing a little, uh, you know, cut towards the uh, towards the line. And, uh, you know, he catches the pass with nobody around him, and then he's able to make the turn up field. He got 12 yards the first time. He got 12 yards once again right there. This is WQE Albu Cyrus, the first choice in North Central Ohio for sports. On uh, a first and 10 from the Colonel Crawford 41-yard line, Gallion. Back to throw is Ruth. He's got his man as a flag down. Class is complete on the far side to Farina. And he will have another first down, but they may be bringing that one back. I thought there was actually some motion on... Uh, yeah, and I think one of the backs stood up too soon. Yeah, that's going to yep. be the call. Just in 15 from the uh, Colonel Crawford 46-yard line. 9.40 left to go in the first half. Yeah, and leading it 7 to nothing on a 48-yard Ben Newman, a touchdown run in the first period. Ruth brings a man in motion. That's Farina coming toward us. And Ruth drops back to throw, rolls a little bit, going to get some pressure, good coverage downfield. Now he fires the ball on a nice comeback route. It's going to be complete. And now they're going to say incomplete. The ball hopped in there, goes incomplete. Tenant receiver was Kevin Stepro. 
Oh, bring up a third down. Good coverage. Backfield that time. Second down, excuse me. Tough play right there for the guy in Tigers. Receiver to the near sideline is O'Leary. It's Jacob O'Leary. And slowly going in motion. Back to throw is Ruth. He's got plenty of time as he rolls this time. Fires the ball. It's going to be incomplete again in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Farina. That one was just dropped. Yeah, right there again, you know, Farina gets a step on the closest defender from the Colonel Crawford Eagles, but uh, Ruth actually put the pass there, just couldn't hold on to it, but the rollout passes, even though the last two have fallen incomplete, are giving Colonel Crawford some problems. They're not getting a whole lot of pressure on Matt Ruth at the quarterback position, because the Tigers are actually leaving eight guys back helping them defend. So third down, 15. Galleon just one for three on the third down so far. Well, that is 33%. They go with the dual running backs, hand the football off to the first man through, and a good stop uh, that time is made on the uh, running back, uh, Newman. And I believe it was uh, Rachel that uh, stood him straight up. Get for the third time here in the first half, and should pin Colonel Crawford back pretty deep, though. And it's going back are uh, Cochran and also Gabriel. A low snap, and Ruth looking for a corner. He gets the leg into it. It hits. It's going to roll inside the five, and makes oh. it into the end. Just got into the end zone, so it'll come out of the 20-yard line. As they tried to pin Colonel Crawford down, almost did it. That probably sat about it less than it showed the ability to move the ball a little bit against the Galleon Tiger defense. Just a matter of cutting out the mistakes. You know, the fumble, last drive, a couple penalties that pinned them back a little bit too far to get a first down in some of the earlier drives. We'll make it the second period as Steiger brings him out. He has one running back this time, Grove, behind him. Oh, now he does have a, another back down. But Grove does get the handoff, cuts right, and cuts right into the waiting arms of Matthew Bart. Pickup of two on the play, so it's second down and eight. Again, simple running attack from both of these teams. You knew that's what we were going to see when we came into it. Um, you know, it's nice to see a team that can pass the ball at a high school level, but let's face it, running the football is going to win you football games, and both these coaches understand that, and that's what they're trying to do, establish a run, then catch them off guard with the pass here and there. Jared Miller checks into the ball game. He comes as a receiver to the near side. Backs are in the eye. Again, the ball goes to Grove, and he's trying to get outside and will only get to the 25-yard line. We'll bring up a third down and about five. Watch out for in this yep. game, actually, believe it or not. Ends, yeah. it's, it's funny as it sounds. Cody, or excuse me, check that it is uh, Greenick who comes to the receiver the near side. Back to the eye. Third down long. Their ball is handed off on a bit of a delay <laughs> and going absolutely nowhere. That's going to be Gabriel again who snuck in there. And Dustin is dropped back at the original line of scrimmage, so he loses the five yards on the play. The little guy. Yeah, D Dustin Gabriel only about five, six hundred and thirty-five pounds, but uh, very quick. And they were trying to give him the ball, try to you know let him bounce something around the outside and make something happen. But uh, Galleon Tigers were able to wrap him up. Actually, got him by the jersey and he just kind of swung him down. Stepper of the lone uh, deep back for Galleon as Grove ready to kick it, standing at his own forty-five yard line. Is Stepro Grove back inside his five to kick it. There's a snap. He gets a oh, beautiful kick. Oh, wow. Fair catch is called for and fumbled. And then, yeah, he'll be down right there after he retrieved it. But a nice kick by Grove. And it comes, Gallion will get it at their own 46 yard line. But kick is from his own 20. Oh, that was an outstanding lender. Back to play on first down. The ball is going to be handed up. Ball is fumbled. And Colonel Crawford's going to recover it. Now, flags fly. I think that was just the marker. Yep. Ben Newman was the uh, ball carrier, and he got uh, stopped at about midfield, and the ball just popped out and flew into the Colonel Crawford side of things. And the Eagles fall on it, and they will start at their own 41-yard line. So each team has fumbled it once here in the first half. Prime example of trying to do a little bit too much with the football. Newman, power running right there, was breaking tackles, but broken about two or three of them. And then uh, same thing that happened a little bit earlier to West just happened to Newman is somebody being able to sneak up from behind and just hit that ball from underneath and knock it up into the air. Colonel Crawford gets the ball back. Greenick splits left. Cochran comes right. The backs are in the eye behind Steiger, who's gone all the way at quarterback here in the first half. He's back to throw. Fires it over the middle and a little bit too low. I think it actually may have hit Greenick in the uh, helmet. Goes incomplete. Yeah, Greenick tried to make a nice dive and grab at it. But uh, again, I think you might be seeing what we talked about earlier, you know, maybe a little bit of moisture on that ball because of the heat, because, uh, you know, that pass from Steiger, even though Greenick is relatively open right there, a um, little bit wobbly, it seemed to slip out of his hands a little bit, like he had a tough time putting any juice on it. 6.17 left to go till halftime. 
probably getting pretty nervous right now is uh, Jeff Angeloff, who's going to try to take a 45-yard field goal for Start a 25-yard car. Yep, yep. Start stretching. Steiger comes up to the line of scrimmage. Again, the backs are in the eye behind him. He drops straight back. Quick pitch over the middle. Green, it gets high. He makes the catch, but by the time he brings it back down, he is covered, but he does get it out to the 45-yard line, so pick up a four on the play. We'll bring up a third down and about six yards to go. Having a receiver like uh, Greenick out there is just a, such a huge benefit for the Colonel Crawford Eagles. It, you know, if, if these quarterbacks being Steiger and or Lane, whoever, you know, is going to be getting most of the playing time throughout the season, can figure out a way to be able to put it out there for Greenick, uh, he's going to make some things happen because of his size. Colonel Crawford going to use a, a timeout. It is at least their second and maybe their third. We lost a track along the way here, but we've got a timeout. 5.44 to go till halftime. It remains Galleon 7 and Colonel Crawford nothing. The football back because you still got 544 That's to maybe right. put in the end zone exactly. again. So big, big play both sides here. Yep. Third and five for Crawford. As Steiger brings him up to the line of scrimmage. You've got a receiver, Greenick, to the near sideline. Backs are in the eye. Quick count. The blitz is on. He, this, he's went up the field for Greenick. It's going to be knocked away. Incomplete cleanly, they say. Greenick was the intended receiver. Knocked away by Dane Farina. On a good play, heavy rush, it goes incomplete, and Crawford will have to kick the ball away. They try to take advantage of what I was talking about earlier, Greenick's height. He goes in, uh, they got him listed at 6'3", and uh, <laughs> the defensive backs for uh, Galleon, certainly not that height. So when yeah. they threw that ball up in the air, they were hoping that Greenick was just going to be able to go up and chase it. But the ball ended up being a little bit underthrown, so Greenick did a nice job playing defensive back. I believe it was Cody Fur who stepped under the ball and tried to intercept it, and he ended up just tackling Fur to make sure that he couldn't get the interception. Grove the kick. They've got Stepro and uh, Roos back fake on the kick as Greenick's got the football. He's got the first down as he gets to midfield. He gets to the guy in 45, still on his feet, and dies ahead of the 42-yard line, but there is a flag back at the Colonel Crawford 44-yard line. And we also have an injured Colonel Crawford player on the field. Yeah, you hope for Colonel Crawford's sake that they have just not done a holding, which I think that's what it is, yeah. unfortunately. But, um, you know, it's tough. I, you know, such a great play right there, and you have to, you know, throw it away with a penalty. Yeah, and that's only usually going to work once a game. Exactly. like that. And, yep, it is going to be on Colonel Crawford, so. That's too bad, especially, yeah. you know, now they're definitely going to have to punt this away. You know, that was a big play. That took them into the Galleon territory. Uh, you know, that really does hurt them. Have not been able to uh, pick up the number on the uh, injured player who's, down. They've got the uh, Works Plus people out there along with uh, Mike Colley of Colonel Crawford is out there looking in. I think also the uh, some people over from the Galleon side taking a look at him. Yeah, so. I mean, Coach Kelly actually ran out yeah. there like, uh, you know, hey, uh, this could be this could be serious with the speed that he can you know, hit the field with. So uh, we'll have to see. Hopefully, like I said, I mean, we you know could get into cramping tonight out here, and that's all you can do is at this point in time hope that that's what the problem is. Big penalty yeah. that was for Colonel Crawford. They would have had the ball on Galleon's 45, 40 yard line or so. Instead, now they got Greenick. He's sitting all the way back at his 20 yard line trying to punt. So I think we're ready to go. Yeah, As Greenick waiting for the snap from center. Ruth and Stepro back deep for Galleon. This time the ball is kicked away. It'll go toward the sideline. Stepro going to have to let it roll and it'll go out of bounds. They're on the 32-yard liner, so it turned out to be a pretty good kick. Ball's on the field right now, so we got to get one of them off of there. Now we finally toss it over. Galleon starting at their own 36-yard line as Ruth brings them up to the line. of scrimmage backs are in the tee this time, and he will give the football off. Sweep into the right side. He's going to be north, and he does get stopped after about a four-yard pickup, so second down and six. Colonel Crawford, though, is doing a very nice job making sure that Galleon doesn't break open another one of those big runs ever since that 48-yarder from Newman. They've been really all over, both Newman and North, realizing that those are the two guys who are pretty much going to get the ball through the remainder of this football game. So, you know, let's stay on them and make sure they don't break anything open big. 4.50 left to go in the first half. Galleon leading at 7-0 on the first quarter touchdown. Back to throw is Ruth. He's rolling. He's got plenty of time. He fires the ball downfield, throws it long. He's got his man on the sideline and they got him by the jersey ball pops loose but it goes out of bounds Cody Fur. there's a little fly pattern down the sideline and it was Cochran who came up from behind and he finally caught him by the jersey and wouldn't let go but they're going to mark it all the way down at the 15 yard line so that would be 35 and 12 
47 yards. Yeah, that was a big play right there from the Galleon Tigers. Andy Cochran just kind of grabbed onto the jersey of Fur and started dragging him, um, and, and Fur just kept running. When he got about an extra five yards, the ball slipped out of his hands. Luckily for Galleon, though, it slipped out of bounds. So the Tigers got great positioning now, great play. First down for the Tigers. They will hand the football off to Newman. Ben to the 20-yard line, or 10-yard line, excuse me, as he gets across that down to about the nine. So pick up of about six yards on the play. And be a big swing here. Could have been, yep, no worse than 7 nothing at halftime. And the Tigers now have a chance to go up by two touchdowns. See, and that's now a good power running up the middle from Newman. Two good plays. Officials call timeout as uh, one of the Galleon players having an equipment problem, Matthew Barth. Yeah, the chin strap was unhooked, so they could that snap back out. Now we're ready to go. Nice crowd on the hand here now. I guess it was a late arriving crowd. As Ruth is going to hand the football off, sweeping to the right side, headed for the end zone. Now going to get cut down at about the five-yard line is North. But he should be very close to the first down. As it looks like he's inside the five. Yeah, he's got the first. Yeah, he's down close to the yeah. one-yard line. He was just maybe even two or so. That'll be the seventh first down here in the first half for Gallion. We'll give him a first and goal from the two-yard line. As play comes in from the sideline, Stepro brings it in from Coach Jim Ruth. And his son, Matt Ruth, will come up under center. Backs are in the tee again with North and Newman. And straight ahead goes Ruth, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. Matt Ruth with a two-yard touchdown plunge. And Galleon goes up 13 to nothing. You can preach about... So back deep are uh, Cochran and Grove this time. As Woodman C finally gets the okay to kick it. And the kick is straight down the middle of the field, and it's picked up by Cochran at about the 10. He's out to the 20, 25, and disappears in a sea of orange at the 25-yard line. So Colonel Crawford will go first and 10. They're going to say the 26-yard line. So first and 10. They've still got 314 to go here in the first half. I believe they have one of their timeouts left. So Brandon Steiger will come out again at quarterback. We will have West in the backfield, along with uh, Mike Grove. Grove is the up back in the I formation right now. And the ball is handed off to West, the first man through, and John gets very short running room uh, to about the 40, or make up 20, Seven yard line, so just to pick up a one. Second nine. Good job right there from the guy and Tigers just holding their position up front, not letting them push him off the ball. And when West came through, they were right there waiting for him. We were able to drag him down after only, like you said, one yard pickup. Yeah, Colin Allen still uh, on the sidelines, uh, just sitting and conversing with uh, one of the assistant coaches right now. We may not see him the rest of the yeah, night. Yeah, I have a he's feeling he might have a run. conduct yeah, concussion. Yeah. I mean, he's really kind of drifting off into Never Never Land. Backs are in the eye with a receiver Greenick out to the left. Back to throw is Steiger. He's going to get some pressure. He fires the ball down the field now. He's got his man, Cochran, at the 50-yard line. He breaks free and gets into the Galleon. 44 yard 40. You're going to say he went down right at the 45-yard line. 18-yard pickup. And they got a 28-yard pickup. That was a great play yeah. right there. That's a perfect pass from Steiger. Certainly the best pass we've seen from him all game long. He put it right into the moving man's hands. Uh, Cochran doing the a little curl and then streak down the sideline. And uh, Like I said, he led him perfectly. He didn't even have to change his pattern at all. Just took that ball right in and was able to get a huge gain out of it. Good play for the Colonel Crawford Eagles. They're in Galleon territory at the Tiger 45-yard line. Just over two minutes left to go here in the first half. Cochran now goes in motion. Yeah, Steiger will hand the football off. Oh, excuse me, he kept it himself on a good little quarterback keeper. And yeah, he's very close to another first down. I thought it looked like he had uh, good play action fake. Looked like Perkins had gotten the handoff, but Steiger kept it. Brings it down just shy of the first down. Looks like they may want to measure this one. Nope, we're going to call it a second down. That was outstanding play action, like you said, Jim. I mean, you know, he did the fake handoff, like you mentioned, and then uh, was able to slip away from one guy. There was one Galleon defender who was not 
fooled by the play, stood back, got a hand on Steiger, but he was able to slip away from the tackle and uh, you know, just make his break downfield. Ended up, like you said, picking up just shy of a first down. That was just a great play from Colonel Crawford and a great run from Steiger. Minute 20 left to go till halftime. Crawford has one timeout left. They bring Cochran in motion toward us. The ball is going to be fumbled at the line of scrimmage. And who's got it? Big pile up. Yep. And Galleon got it. Second turnover on Colonel Crawford, and that one is as costly as that penalty was in our last possession. Oh, no doubt about it. That one really hurts them very, very badly. You see, you know, Colonel Crawford, if you take away the you know mistakes that they're making, the penalties and the turnovers, they're playing on par with the Galleon Tigers tonight, with the exception being one run and one pass. They're playing with them, and, you know, they're moving the ball offensively. They're just shooting themselves in the foot each and every time they're bringing it down. If Colonel Crawford can figure out a way to stop them here, go in the halftime, kind of regroup themselves. You're only down by two touchdowns. Come back out and uh, play mistake-free football in the second half. They're still in it, but they got to make the stop here before uh, the halftime hits. Tigers are there 36. They have two timeouts left. They will hand the football off on first down to North. Or check it, it's not North. It's going to be somebody brand new into the ball game. It's uh, Matthew Barth, the ball carrier. They will go without a huddle. As Barth got just a yard on the play. I say no gain, second down and 10. Under a minute to go now. As back to throw is Ruth. He is rolling to his far sideline. The pass is going to be caught in the middle of the field by Stepro. He breaks away at the 50-yard line, 45. And finally, he is caught from behind by Andy Cochran all the way up at the 43-yard line. The pickup of uh, 21 on a play. I tell you, right there, the rollout pass once again, giving Colonel Crawford a little bit of difficulty, and Step Row doing a little bit of dancing after the play, getting himself some extra yards. They did stop the clock while they moved the sticks, and now Ruth will just take the ball and slam it into the ground to stop the clock. So good heads up play as they hustled up to the line of scrimmage. Took six seconds after the play was ended to do that. So the receiver to the near sideline. Ball is kept by the quarterback, Ruth. He eludes one tackle in the backfield. Now he's looking upfield. He fires the ball long. He's got Furr again on the sideline. He gets bumped out of bounds by Cochran. But another great catch by Cody Furr and another big gain for the Tigers as they're going to put it down at the 15-yard line. So a pickup of 18 on the pass play. Tigers doing a little more through the air tonight than they are on the ground. Absolutely, because that's where the openings are being held for Colonel Crawford. You know, the Eagles right now sitting back into a prevent defense, trying not to let anything get behind them. But, you know, they're just letting long passes of about 15 yards sit right in front of them. And, the, you know, guy and Tiger wide receivers are doing a nice job slipping into the opening spots. 28 seconds to go in the first half. Tigers up by 14. Ruth rolls to his right. He fires it in the middle. Ball is going to be bobbled and dropped, and flags are down. Flags are back at the line of scrimmage. That may be a hold on Galleon. Stepro was the intended receiver and just did a juggling act, couldn't pull it in. Credit to Cody Furr on the play before that. Very heads up after he caught that ball, getting out of bounds and stopping the clock for the Galleon Tigers. That's good thinking out there. Galleon a little slow in getting the play in. In fact, they're still in the huddle, and now they're going to be forced up. Colonel Crawford going to take the uh, timeout. Well, that was interesting. Yeah, 23 seconds to go till halftime with a timeout on the field. The Galleon Tigers, 14. Colonel Crawford Eagles, nothing. Here's that. They will split the wide receivers, step row and fur, left and right. Some Only one plays. running back. And as they look to throw, it looks like it's a throwing formation, but they do hand the football off and stumbling his way up and through, but getting uh, some tough running yard is going to be a uh, Barth. And now the Tigers, I think, will utilize one of their remaining timeouts. But with 16 seconds, we'll just stay here with it. This defense not quite powerful enough to really withstand being down three touchdowns in a game. At the 13-yard line with a second down and eight, they put a man in motion. Ruth rolling, rolling, rolling. He fires the ball. It's going to be complete, and now we're going to say incomplete. The ball was bobbled, and then a good hard hit from Andy Cochran jarred the ball loose. The intended receiver looked like North out of the backfield. So it goes incomplete, stops the clock with nine seconds to go until halftime. And Galleon faced with a third and eight from the 13-yard line. Like you said, great stick right there from Andy Cochran, knocking that ball loose. He's been doing some licking out there. I mean, he, you know, that's about the third hit where I've really seen him, you know, hit pretty fiercely. He's really laying his shoulders into guys and hitting them square. But uh, once again, Colonel Crawford still has a couple more plays that they got to come up big on. Crawford ran the 25 plays in the first half with the four first downs. They were penalized to three times for 40 yards. Galleon ran the 30 first half plays, nine first downs.
penalized just a twice for 10 yards. Uh, Colonel Crawford with the two turnovers and Gallion with the one turnover in the first half. Other football uh, games being played in the uh, area tonight. Buckeye Central is at home against South Central. Cyrus at Ontario, a Crestline hosting Crestview, Winford at Mohawk, and you'll hear the uh, Winford Mohawk game tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Uh, 92-7 goal with the Jeff Cross is our North Central Electric uh, broadcast a game of the week. Also, uh, Plymouth at Seneca East, Upper Sandusky's at Coldwater, Lucas at Hillsdale, Cary at Riverdale, Ashland at Bellevue, Columbian at Clyde, Margareta at Willard, Huron at Norwalk, and of course, Dave, you'll have the scores of all that, plus uh, get us up to date on what the Indians did tonight. That's coming up on the foam board when uh, Jeff and I are done here tonight at Heisey Park. Tigers have it teed up, ready to kick it off to start the second half. They have the 14-0 lead. On the tee with it is a Joshua Woodmansey. And the second half is underway here at Heisey Park as Woodmansey approaches. Gets a nice foot into the ball this time, and it'll be taken at about the 20-yard line, 25-30, 35, cut back 40. Still on his feet and going down, that's Cochran, who brings it out. They're going to say just shy of the 40-yard line, so we will start the 39. Nice return. I'll tell you, there was some hitting out there yeah. on that kick return. I saw about four guys all go flying, both teams, by the way, um, just flying in the air, going, you know, falling back at about five yards after collisions. Uh, once again, good way to get the second half started off. Both these teams fired up, feeling like they got a good opportunity to pick up a victory here at Heisey Park. Brandon Steiger has gone the distance at quarterback so far. He comes out to start the second half. He will split Greenick and Cochran on first down as West and Grove in the backfield. Grove gets the handoff. One man misses him in the backfield. He scoots forward, though, finally wrapped up and brought down, just shy of the 45-yard line. Got it out to the 44-yard line, making the stop for Gallion was Matthew Barth. So pick up of about five on the play and second down and five. One thing Grove's been doing very well in this game, uh, you know, he's picking and choosing his spots, running the football, kind of sliding where the holes are, but he's also doing a good job of keeping his momentum forward. That way when they tackle him, he's always falling forward, picking up an extra yard. Greenick left, Cochran right as Colonel Crawford goes left to right here in the third period. Steiger, this time he keeps the football. Now he pitches it in the last second to Grove. He cuts back and he'll only get to the 45-yard line. Gallion did a good job of making sure there was a helmet on everybody. Pick up of a yard on the play. And brings up a third down. Colonel Crawford was just one of five on the third downs in the first half. Yeah, and this is a good one right here for Colonel Crawford. You know, they got good field position. They're just shy of the 50-yard line right now. They can figure out a way to get this first down. And like I said, build some momentum here in the second half. You know, try to put one in the end zone at this point in time early in the game. You're right back in it. Third and about four. Backs are in the eye. Split wide receivers. Steiger will hand the football off to Grove. He goes right up the middle. And good job of tackling by the Galleon Tigers leading the charge up front was Ben Newman and they will stop him short and force another punch. And they knew that play uh, was coming the entire time. There's no doubt about it. Gallion really packed it in. They had put Cochran and Greenick out on the wings, but they pretty much just single covered both of them and said, if you are going to throw the football, uh, go for it because we don't think you're going to. We think you're going to give it to Grove for the third time in a row and we're going to be there to stop him this time. It's going to be the fifth punt in the game for Colonel Crawford. Greenick standing back at about his 30-yard line. Does kick the ball away. Gets a nice spiral coming toward the sideline and kicks out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. Now we're going to say it went out at about the 20, 28, we'll call it. So the Tigers will start there with a the first down. Leading. Looks like it might get a little tough out there. So Ruth brings him up to the line of scrimmage. He has Newman as the only uh, true running back. They put a man in motion. Newman does get the handoff, though. The uh, blocker in front of him slipped and fell down. But Newman able to bring it out to the 30 two-yard line. Pick up a, a little bit of a slip slide and got himself a good five yards. So it's a second down. The ball is handed off to North, and North will go down back at the 30-yard line, so he'll lose a couple of yards on the play. Looking around the uh, sideline to see if I spot uh, Colin Allen, who uh, had his bell rung in the first half, and I don't see him out there anyway. There are a couple players now in street clothes, so he may be one of them. Yeah, he really did get a, a shot. Uh, I was oh, thinking it was probably a concussion. He but does have his uniform on. Standing right to the uh, first down marker. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So third down and eight for the Tigers. They were a one for five in the first half on third downs. The ball is kept by Ruth. He's rolling to his right, looking up field. He's going to tuck the ball and run now. The flag is down. He's got the first down at midfield. He's the Tiger, or excuse me, the Eagle 45-yard line now, the 40. But there's a flag back at the Tiger 30. And we're probably going to bring it back. 
Yeah, I'll tell you what. The, you got to see a little bit of the athleticism, though, yeah. of Matt Ruth right there. Uh, just blazing fast. As he got around that corner right there, he realized there was nobody open downfield. So he just tucked it under and took off running with it. And, you know, oh. the one thing I'm, I'm, imp I'm impressed. Wow. And Crawford. That's going to be big. Oh, that's big yeah. right there. Somebody. That really hurts. Yeah, defensive holding. But, again, Ruth with a nice uh, run there. And turns out to be a very nice run. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, the thing is, uh, you know, when you get guys who can run like Ruth, can they have a tendency to uh, try to run all the time and uh, Ruth's been doing a nice job you haven't seen him take off yeah. too much in this game um, did it there for only the second time in this game first time he ended up only getting a two yard touchdown out of it but that one goes uh, what do we got on that one a 27 yard 20 yeah. Uh, yeah I mean 29 yard run for him they declined the penalty because it would have come back to the line of scrimmage and been 10 yards so much more on the uh, gain Ruth this time rolling left he's got a crowd of yellow shirts around him. somebody's got him by the jersey and drags him down for a loss back to the 45-yard line. It was the uh, 4-yard line of Colonel Crawford is Galleon facing a second down and 12. In motion. Back to throw is Ruth. He is looking upfield. He fires the ball, and we've got Whistle stopping the play. And that would indicate an offensive penalty. Yep. Tried to uh, get the ball over here on this uh, near side to Dane Farina, but... Sorry, a couple guys got popped out there anyway. Whistles was going, but they weren't paying, still playing out there and uh, got railed. You know, I mean, they're going to take two shots at it here and then have to punt it away. But Colonel Crawford really needs to step it up right now defensively. You cannot afford on a second and 17. When you get a team 17 yards back, you can't be letting up first downs. And Galleon's got to look at it, too, that they've got two plays to go to 17 yards. Exactly. Get it all in one. Ruth on the first down. will hand the football off. Scooting straight up the middle as Newman. And Ben will... Get short yardage down to the Colonel Crawford 46-yard line. Pick up a three on the play. Yeah, Newman right there, just uh, power running. They tried to go up the middle. They wrapped him up a little bit, so he uh, kept his legs going, ended up just going east and west, and uh, wasn't going anywhere. Kind of fell himself forward for another couple yards. But now a third down and long for Galleon, and it's important that Colonel Crawford steps it up defensively, puts some pressure on Ruth, because you're probably going to go with another rollout pass here, and defensive backs and have to keep, uh, keep on their man. Obviously, Galleon Tigers have two very good receivers in Fern Stepro. Oh, the way Ruth likes to roll to the right is the short side of the field right now, so yep. that may uh, limit them a little bit on what they can do. Third and 14. Ruth is going to keep the football. He does roll left instead. He's looking upfield. He fires the ball, gets popped as he does. Ball is going to be picked off by Cochran back at the 15-yard line. And leveling the boom on Ruth was Sean Rachel. This is the let it go. He popped him in the interception. Second turnover on Galleon. Yep, Cochran just sitting back there playing center field. Ruth threw that ball up in the air looking for his receiver and then overthrew him. But, uh, you know, hey, is that really too much of a loss for Gang? Yeah. Let's face it. I mean, they would end up, if it falls incomplete, they punt, and they're probably sitting at around the same point that they're sitting right now. I mean, you know, you know, Colonel Crawford's down deep in their own territory. 13-yard line, 6.24 to go in the third, 14 and nothing. Gallion has the lead, a first and a second quarter touchdown. Back to throw. New quarterback is in there. Lane's pass is going to be incomplete. So they do uh, make the switch to go to Brandon Lane here at quarterback to start the second series of the third period, but his first pass incomplete. Yeah, I saw Lane uh, taking some snaps on the sideline a little bit earlier. Obviously, uh, they're feeling like right now you know, they don't have any points on the board. Let's you know do a little switch up and let's see what we can do. Hopefully a new quarterback, a new look will uh, spark the offense. He got on their only uh, score last week on a, a touchdown pass. Threw over uh, 60 yards in passing in the uh, half a quarter that he played. He'll split wide receivers on first, uh, second down and 10. Lane is going to keep the football himself. He's still with it. He gets popped from behind and gets about a five-yard, maybe six-yard pickup as he comes to the right side. So Colonel Crawford will be looking at third and about five. Still inside their 20-yard line. Well, again, we're going to see an opportunity here to see uh, Brandon Lane probably put one up in the air. Obviously, he's got to be careful, though. You know, I mean, he's deep in his own territory. He can't afford to put any costly passes up in the air, something that the Galleon Tigers can step in front of, because if they do, right now being so close to the end zone, it's a good chance that could be six points. Yeah, he was three of six for 60-plus yards last week. He's got a third down and five. He hands the football off, and a counter Cochran drops it. But it's going to be recovered. It looked like uh, Sean Rachel fell back on it. 
It was Rachel that did recover it, but it'll be a loss on a play, and Colonel Crawford will have to kick it away. Loss of two on the play. And the Eagles will punt number six in the ball game. I tell you, you think Coach Kyle is probably thinking to himself, but, hey, you know, we're deep in our own territory. Let's just do a safe handoff play right here because uh, we don't want to take a chance of an interception. <laughs> sure enough, you guys end up fumbling. Greenick from his goal line will keep Oof. the ball out. Another booming punt going to drive back to the 45-yard line. That is Ruth. He's to midfield. Cuts back the other way. Gets the gap. Crawford 45. He's the 40. Nice little stutter step. 35, and he will go down at about the 30-yard line. A heck of a return as the Greenick out kicked the coverage that time. Yeah, exactly. That's what happened once again. Greenick with a booming punt. Probably get a good 40 yards on it and good height as well. But, uh, you know, again, guys weren't able to get down fast enough. And then when they did, Ruth, like you said, did a couple stutter steps. Was, you know, picking his spots very nicely. And he's very uh, elusive, but not only just elusive, explosive. Hits those holes fast. I think what's happening, I think the officials are calling timeouts. Yes. About uh -huh. halfway through each period to let the guys have a water That's break. That's exactly what I was thinking the same thing. So we have it. As everybody gets a little drink. And Matt Ruth brings him up to the line of scrimmage. He's got the uh, dual running backs with split wide receivers. Now, they bring a man in motion, but the handoff goes to Newman, and a flag flies as well. And Newman gets the 10 yards down to the 20-yard line, but the flag was thrown uh, yeah, that one's coming back. behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, yeah that one's going to be another hold against the Galleon Tigers. It'll be their uh, fourth penalty of the night. They're up to 30 yards now in penalties. Here's behind the line of scrimmage and get a huge penalty. So Russo has a first down to work with. He'll send the man in motion. That's Farina. He's back to throw. Blitz is on, and they got him. They wrapped him up back Great down. Play. That's Rachel again. Drops him back at the 49-yard line, a seven-yard loss. Yeah, Sean Rachel. He's made three big plays here in the last uh, couple of series. He may have caused that interception with the uh, hit on Ruth in the last series, and he recovered a fumble for Colonel Crawford off a handoff, and now uh, again sacks the quarterback. See, that, what made that play so impressive was as he broke through that line of scrimmage, one of the linemen gave him a bump to almost knock him out of the play, but he was able to just reach back and grab a handful of the jersey of Ruth, and while he was on the ground, he was able to swing Ruth down to the ground. Just an outstanding tackle. Second and 29, Farina goes in motion there, just at about midfield ball, is handed off to Newman. He's gonna get hit and dropped. Back at the, actually lost about a half a yard, and they are right at the 50 yard line now. That brings up a big third down play for Gallion, and it will be. Down there, if they get to pick it off, you know, they're sitting inside their own 20 yard line once again. So Ruth will, Nope, going to hand the football off instead to North. He breaks a couple of tackles at the line of scrimmage, but only going to get to the Crawford 45-yard line, so he gets five yards on the play as they play it safe. And we'll kick the ball away. This will be the fourth punt for Galleon tonight. We got our first cramp. Uh, no, he's up. Yeah, he's uh, limping a little bit. It's uh, Steve Rittenauer. Coming okay. to the sideline. Yeah. He, uh, he took a couple steps and then kind of went down to a knee, and then... Uh, he uh, hobbled his way off. Yeah. Very obvious that it was a, a cramp, but uh, and he's limping right now and a lot of pain on the sideline. But he'll be all right. But I'm telling you, those Walk cramps are tough. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to have a timeout taken by the Colonel Crawford Eagles. We'll just stay right here with it though, with only a 2:32 to go till halftime. And up on it. It's a yep. fourth and 25. Yeah, I'm going to uh, kick the football away. Is Ruth at his 40. Big rush coming, and he does get the kick away. Ruth goes down, but there's no flag. The ball. He has taken a galleon roll and will be picked up inside the 15 at about the 13-yard line. And we've got another Crawford player down. I think it's Gary Haldeman, who, yeah. when he dove for the ball... I think he just got a cramp. Yeah. Keeping it just a 14-0 game. As Brandon Lane, the second Colonel Crawford quarterback of the night, is out there, he's going to hand the football off on first down, straight up the middle, was uh, West. And John will find the running tough. But he does get about... Three yards on the play. And they are back in a hole inside their own their 16 yard line now. Hey, you know, Gallion's doing a nice job right now winning the battle of field position, if nothing else. You know, like I mentioned earlier, Colonel Crawford doesn't have that type of offense that's just going to explode a, you know, a 70 yard run. You know, they'd really have to have great blocking and a little bit of luck. Lane is going to take a quick drop. He fires the ball over the middle. He's got Greenick on a crossing pattern and a good Ooh. job by Tim just to hang out of the football as he got yeah. popped. Sure did. But he yeah, should have a first down, and he does if he brings it out to the 25-yard line. So a pickup of nine on the pass play. 
He left his receiver out there hanging the dry a little bit, but still a good, pla a good pass from Lane. You know, threaded the needle right between three Galleon Tigers very nicely. Hit Greenick right in stride, and that was the little slant pattern that I'm such a big fan of. First first down for Colonel Crawford in the second half. They're fifth in the ball game. Now the officials have stopped play as uh, I think Tim Greenick either has an equipment problem or maybe shaken up a little bit. <laughs> I don't know where they came from. Yeah. Send them back. <laughs> Seriously. First and ten for Colonel Crawford again at their own 25-yard uh, line. And on the first down play, the ball is sweeping the left side. Is I believe it's going to be Grove. But we'll wait and see. Or take out was Grove, the ball carrier, and no gain on the play, so it's second down and 10. On the 25. Turned out to be a nice crowd here tonight. Absolutely. They started coming out a little yeah. bit, and, uh, you know, it's not always easy to rough conditions yeah. like this. It's, uh, it's not exactly the most beautiful night for football, but everybody's coming out to support the team, and that's nice to see. Yeah, good uh, school spirit as well, shown on uh, both sides. Yep. That's what it's all about, high school football. Uh, Greenick comes to the receiver the near side. Cochran splits out to the left. The backs are in the high behind Brandon Lane, who drops straight back. A blitz is on. They pick it up. The ball is fired. It's going to be overthrown, and the <laughs> defender just tripped all over himself. It was a Cody Furr, the closest man to it. Greenick was the closest Crawford defender, but Furr just tripped over his own feet and never did come up with it. Yeah, Lane and Greenick not on the same page. Uh, oh, Greenick flag. going towards the sideline, but uh, Lane throwing it straight deep. And like you said, Furr the only one that with the opportunity to try to get the ball. He started watching the ball and running backwards. He ended up falling over his own feet. There was a flag on the play back at the line of scrimmage, and Colonel Crawford is walking backward. Yep. So I might have a hold. That's the preliminary signal right now. And they do have it second down and 24. 11 yard line. And they say the 11 yard line. Huh? Missed it by one. As Lane will just pitch the football quick pitch that time to uh, Cochran. Or check it was not Cochran, it was uh, John West, excuse me. So just a short gain. And it'll be third and long for Colonel Crawford. As Lane comes over to the sideline to get the play from Mike Cauley. And the coach is just down to our left. Move it out to about, the, give him about a two-yard pickup on that last carry. So second down, or third down, 22. And as again, Greenick splits out to the left. Backs are in the eye. And did they take too much time? And, oh, the third quarter's come to an end. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wasn't even paying attention to the clock. So we have played the three quarters tonight here at Heisey Park and Galleon. Three in the books. We'll wake up here sooner or later. It's the Galleon Tigers 14, the Colonel Crawford Eagles nothing. That, uh, you know, they're finally having, mar they got to march 90 yards to get a touchdown. Galleon showing blitz on third down. Back to throw is Lane. He's got his man open at the 20 yard line, 25, spinning and going down. He'll be well sh shy of the uh, first down, Ryan B now. Made a nice catch and a run. Got it out to the 25-yard uh, line, so he picked up 12 yards on the play, but well short of the first down. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, nice little, uh, it, it almost looked like they were setting up a screen pass or something, but uh, it was actually, it was set up that he, you know, he did a crossing pattern right over the middle, went about five yards, and Galleon Tigers, their defenders were sitting back a little bit, saying, hey, listen, you got to pick up big yardage. We're going to sit back, and we're going to make sure you just don't get a first down. So Greenick into punt for the seventh time tonight. It's a nice snap from center, not much of a rush, and he gets another, this time an end-over-end end kick, but very deep. Step row back at the 35-yard line, gives ground a little bit, now he's back at the 40, 45, near sideline 50. 45 of Colonel Crawford, 40 weaving his way up the field, and a nice return as he brings it all the way back to the Colonel Crawford 31-yard line. Uh, there, there's a Crawford's okay with that because, I mean, after a great return from Galleon, then, you know, hey, we'll punt that one again. Just notice, really surprised me, all the officials wearing a long pants tonight. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're nuts. <laughs> I mean, they, they all have bad legs. <laughs> That's possible. Well, we'll do it again. Yeah, it's Greenick again from about his 10-yard line. It's good to see they're not cramping. Yeah. <laughs> Step row and uh, Ruth are back. There's a nice snap again. Again, not much of a rush. Well, this time it's more of a spiral, but again, it's going to drive the defense. He dropped the football. He's still having trouble picking it up. Now he finally does get his ground to 20-35. Back of the 30 upfield, and he ran right into a Colonel Crawford Eagle. That was uh, early Car Carson Early, the uh, kicker. 
made the return that time. Brings it back. The Island looking to run some time off the clock. 10.53 left. They have a 14 nothing lead. Officials had time out for a moment. As I think again, we've got an equipment adjustment being made. Now the two officials on the far side are going over to Galleon uh, coach Jim Ruth, who is also the uh, athletic director. Figure that one out. Yeah. So we got a first down as Ruth understood. They put a man in motion. That's going to keep the football, drop him back to throw. He's yep. not going to go back. We've got a flag down, and Ruth is still on his feet as he eludes some more tacklers. Still running around behind the line of scrimmage. Now he finally starts to feel he's the midfield, 45-40. There's a flag down here as well. And finally, it's Ruth gonna, goes down. It'll definitely come back against yeah. Galleon. Uh, that one is definitely a hold. Could even call it clip on yeah. it. I'm not sure which one he's going to go with. But uh, the one in the backfield, it was a painfully obvious play by the offensive lineman. Um, actually, the defensive lineman for Colonel Crawford got a hand on Ruth's jersey, was holding on to it. So the offensive lineman just popped him from behind to take him out of the play. A great piece of running by uh, Matt Ruth, Absolutely. again, showing his uh, elusiveness. Great athleticism, went to the one side of the field, saw nothing there, so he ran all the way to the other side of the field. Ended up running about 20 yards, picking up 20 yards on the play, but like I said, it's going nowhere. And it will come back, as Jeff indicates. I think they have offsetting again. Yep, there's yep. another flag downfield. Uh, they got holding on Colonel Crawford and holding, uh, holding both ways. I'm telling you. Yeah, second time we've had offsets. But again, Crawford's going to benefit from it because yep, the sure had it deep in Colonel Crawford territory, but again, they've got it first and 10 back at their own 40-yard line. The heat is affecting their uh, the cleanliness of their play, so Ooh, to speak. Wow. Wally is going to be handed off this time. They'll just keep it on the ground. Big hole this time coming to the near sideline is Newman. He's got the 35. He's at the 30. It's a foot race for the corner. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Galleon Tigers. Ben Oof. Newman with his second run, long run of the night. This one will be for 60 yards. Oh, make no dumb mistake about it, though. That play was based solely off of pure speed by yeah. Ben Newman. You know, he was able to get through the hole. Ended up just deciding to bounce it outside because he, you know, the the interior where he was going through was really packed in. Bounced it around to the outside and really he outran everybody to the corner and right down the field. Um, they had a good angle of pursuit on him, but he just took yeah. off. He put on the after afterburners and uh, big time taught it. And obviously, I mean, not just the head coach when you talk about Jim yeah. Ruth, but look at all the assistants that yeah. come back. You know, Dick Predmore back with the team right now. Uh, Jim Wegason as well. Woodmanson ready to kick the football off. A nice spinning kick coming down, taken by Gabriel, and he's trying to scoot up the field, and he's going to go down in a pile at about the 30-yard line. A little extra pushing and shoving going on. It's getting a little frustration out there. Yep. And Colonel Crawford will have it at their 31. They have had have wound up in a punt. Let's see, one, two, three, so they had uh, seven possessions in the first half. They've had the three, yeah, seven out of ten. They have punted, and now they're one man short out there, so they're going to have to hustle and get somebody out. They've gone back to uh, Steiger at the quarterback spot. Yeah, Lane had his opportunity, and uh, he did an all right job. He was two of four for 21 yards. Colonel Crawford, uh, not enough people on the field, so they're going to have to take a timeout to get organized. 10-21 left to go in the ball game with a timeout. It, and Galleon, or Colonel Crawford, right up to the line of scrimmage. First and 10, they're at their own 31-yard uh, line, trailing 21 to nothing against Steiger. Back at quarterback now. Brandon will keep the football. He gets hit as he throws, but he's got his man wide open in the middle part of the field. That's going to be B now again. And Ryan makes the first down, but there's a flag down on the Jeez. far side of the field. I'm telling you, these yeah. flags are, you know, really hurting both these teams from moving on the football. That'll be now's catch good for 11 yards if it stands. Let's wait to see now what the penalty is going to be. Dead ball foul, personal foul on Ooh. Giants. So they'll add that to the pickup. Take that if you're Colonel yeah. Crawford, absolutely. Well, that's going to put him into a Galleon territory. Tigers up to 45 yards now in penalties. You don't mind the aggressive penalties, but the uh, stupid ones like that really absolutely. get on a coach. But, you know, I, I tell you, the thing that when you think about when you're talking about the penalties what we're talking about in this game, you know, if Colonel Crawford wipes out their penalties and mistakes in this game, they're in this game. Yeah. Right now, I mean, they're most definitely in this game. And from Galleon's perspective, you know, let's face it, if they're facing a team that, you know, in the NOL, you're Bellevue and you're having these type of penalties, it's really going to hurt you. On uh, the first down play, the ball is handed off to John West, and he found some tough yards right up the middle. In fact, only got one. 
So second down and nine. Clock running with 9.48 left to play. 21 nothing. Colonel Crawford has the lead. When we are done, we will have foam board with Davy Jones. I guess we left, left speechless after that comment. Uh, yeah. that, that, he does it to me every time. Okay. I say, what can I tell you? At the uh, <laughs> Galleon 43-yard line. I'm still just amazed that I thought he was going to have to hold yeah, the, the yeah. field goal at halftime. And our uh, kicker tonight was uh, Jeff Angeloff, and he missed the field goal. So, no car. Back to throw is Steiger. It's a ball. is is going to be a delayed wow. draw. Yeah, and he just dropped the football, and luckily he does cover it back at midfield. We really lost a seven on the play. Brings up a third and long. See another tough play, though, that goes against Colonel Crawford right there. Drops the football, and it, you know, it puts them back into a situation where they're in a long situation for a first down. It'll be third or yeah, second, third and 16, it should be. Oh, there was a flag on the play, excuse me. Holding on Colonel Crawford. And it will be declined as they will take the loss, which ended up being seven yards. So it brings up third down and 16 yards to go. As the ball just back on the Colonel Crawford side of the 50 yard line, something that you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you. I I'll share it with you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Hey, anytime. Thank you. Better than frostbite, though. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so I guess third and 16. Uh, Steiger again has the backs in the eye. And he will keep the football. Blitz is on. He's going to get rid of the ball, though. Kind of a jump pass. Greenick with a nice catch wow. on the sideline, and he dies for the first down marker and goes out of bounds. He should have it. <laughs> As it will. <laughs> Boy, if he, he just did get it if he got it. As he saw where the stick he was. Dove. Just dove. Yeah, yeah. I think he got it. Yeah, they got to give it to him. As he is inside the 35-yard line. Oh, fourth down. So, yeah. And they're going to have to go for oh, yeah, it at this go point here, in time, yeah. you know, no doubt about it. But what a great play. Yeah. Steiger off balance throw from, you know, his back foot. Just kind of lofts one up in the air. And sure enough, it's Greenick being able to come underneath it and pick up the 16 yards. And then uh, makes the lunge for the first down marker. The ball is kept uh, and they're not going to get it. Blitz was on and Steiger could not get rid of the football. I think he wanted to hand it off to uh, West and never did get the ball to him. He loses back to the 40-yard line, so a loss of five on the play, and the Tigers take over on downs. That one really hurts Colonel Crawford. Should have, you know, like you said, went with the easy play, probably go right up the gut or something like that, but uh, instead uh, got a little bit fancy, maybe a little miscommunication, not quite sure what it was was going on out there, and uh, Steiger ends up getting popped. And, uh, they lose five yards on the play when they really needed only about a half a yard for a first down. That's yep. tough. Galleon up 21 to nothing with 8.33 left to play. They stay with the uh, first unit as Ruth brings him out. As Newman is his only running back, puts south in motion, or north in motion, excuse me, wrong direction, as Ooh. Ruth doing some spin moves, and he brings it across the 45 to the 46-yard line for a six-yard pickup. And that's a good tackle right there by Andy Cochran. He was able to come up, be one of the few guys that actually, he got his, got a hold of Ruth, and, you know, put a shoulder into him, you know, right at the waist, and uh, drug him down to the ground. Solid tackling, that's something the other guys weren't doing. That's why they were hogging air when he was doing his spin moves. Uh, Steve Rittenauer of uh, Colonel Crawford uh, got up kind of slow and they uh, stopped the clock while he gets out of play and we'll take a seat on the bench over here and I'll uh, work on him. Second down and six for the Tigers. And they put a man in motion. Ball is going to be handed off. That is Newman coming back. He's a 35. He's the 40-yard line. He goes out of bounds. It's Colonel Crawford 40-yard line. Pick up uh, 14 on the play and another Tiger first down. They've got their 12th on the night. Yeah, Colonel Crawford is uh, starting to look a little bit weary out there, a little bit tired, like this weather is starting to get to him, whereas some of those guys for Galleon, your Newmans and Roots, are still very quick on their feet. Uh, you know, they're light on their feet, and they're uh, they're hitting the holes very, very quickly and taking it to the outside. That's what Newman right did right there, just using flat speed to get around the corners. Colonel Crawford's only had 18 offensive plays here in the second half, so the defense has been out there a lot. Again, they send the man in motion. This time, Ruth is going to roll himself. He stops now, flips the ball up. It's going to be complete to North. He's at the 25-yard line, 20 on the far sideline, 15-10, breaks a tackle, and gets it down about the 10-yard line. Now some flags fly. We may have some late hits over there. About a 30-yard pickup. They're going to say down to the 7-yard line, so we'll give him 33 yards. 
I tell you, you know, on the play though, what ends up happening is you see the tiredness of, of the Colonel Crawford Eagles because they had him wrapped up probably about after a five-yard catch. They're going to pick it up. They say yep. it was inadvertent. And, uh, you know, they got yeah. him after about a five-yard catch, and, and, you know, they start to try to grab after his legs, and, they're you know, they're just arm tackling, and he's running right through it right there. Um, they end up finally dragging him down before he gets to the end zone, but that really hurts him. They're in a position right now where Galleon's about to punch in another touchdown, and obviously that would most definitely seal the game. Tigers up by 21. They have it first and goal at the Colonel Crawford seven yard line. Seven and a half minutes left to play. Matt Ruth doing a great job yeah. throwing the football though today. I do want to give him credit for that. He's got 157 yards passing already. He will take the snap from center, hands the football off, and Newman going for his third score will be held just shy of the, uh, oh, actually going to say about the four yard line he got to. So got three yards on it. Second and goal from the four. And a few of the things. Again, up under center. He will turn around, hands the football off. Newman goes left side into the end zone for a four-yard touchdown. His third score of the night. His shortest run of the night for a touchdown. And it's 27 to nothing now in favor of the Galleon Tigers with 640 left to play. And Offered getting a couple of big ones themselves. And uh, once again, consistent football that will win you most games. And flags Done, fly yeah. before the kick. Unbelievable. Yeah. Game has taken forever. And I think Colonel Crawford was offsides because that was the uh, guy who threw the flag that time. And so you get to about the 10-yard line. It's the 20. He's coming straight up, 25. Trying to get to this near sideline, but gang tackling by the Tigers. And he will go down in a heap at the 26-yard line. Colonel Crawford will just try to see if they can establish something here in the final uh, six and a half minutes. They are down to 28 to nothing. And we'll start this possession at their 26-yard line. they will bring the Steiger back out at quarterback. All in on the soccer guy. Also, and you know, oh, just, I was just going to say also uh, coming out is going to be uh, Jared Miller at uh, probably one of the wide receivers. No, the one thing for Colonel Crawford, same thing that we've been saying in the two other games that we've done this year. At this point in time, just try to get something going. You know, march a, uh, march a drive downfield, punch one in the end zone, build for next week at this point in time. So Steiger on first down, hands the football off. That is Cochran. He finally gets good running room up across the 35, out to about the 38-yard line before he got knifed down. But we've seen some good uh, plays, but the Colonel Crawford just has not been able to string anything together. 13 yards on that pickup. Yeah, but uh, the fact is, is that's his first carry in this game, and that's a little surprising to me. This time Steiger keeps the football. He ducks in over the left tackle and gets about five yards out to the... 44 a yard line. Brings up a second down and five. Clock rolling with 5.59 left to play. Tigers are in control at 28 to nothing. They're looking to go 2 0 on the year. And we'll have a game next week at Big Walnut. And I know that that's always a very tough matchup for the Galleon Tigers, one that they've struggled with. But um, I know a lot of people felt like after that win versus Ashland the first week of the year that they can go beginning of this year certainly 4 and 1. Mm -hmm. And that's a great start for the Galleon Tigers. So Steiger on a second down and five will you know, keep the football. In. Oh, he did end up handing the football off. It's very uh -huh. similar to what we saw last week with yep. uh, Ridgedale where they both uh, held it for a while and it uh, wound up being West, I believe, the ball carrier. John gets a big pickup and another Galleon, or excuse me, another Colonel Crawford first down there, eighth on the night. And brings it out to the 46-yard line. I see a lot of uh, fresh uniforms on the Tiger side. Yeah, sure, as they've got some younger guys out there right now. Getting some opportunity to play, uh, you know, maybe a couple of them JV ball players. But you see what happens. See that offense that we saw last week. It's complicated to, you know, to yeah. pick up even when it's a mistake. Greenick splits to the right. As back to throw is Steiger. Going to get some pressure. He does get the ball off. Got Greenick, and there's a collision. And I think it's going to be. Oh, now they're going to throw yeah. the flag. I thought they might not throw it because both players were going he was for the going ball. To ball. Yeah. yeah, you know, as far as I, I thought, that was. You know, even I think they're they, going to pick it up. Yeah, they've got to pick that up. Because uh, who was it? Carson Early yeah. was the one that was sitting back there. And, you know, he was playing the ball the entire time. Greenick nope. went up. No, nope, they're going to... Call an interference on yeah. Galleon. So, yeah, 
I, I can't necessarily yeah, say yeah. I agree with that play because I thought I thought early was going up. He don't he never looked at Greenick at yeah. any time. You know, he glanced at him for a second, then stepped up and tried to play the ball. Actually, if anything, I thought Greenick ran into him. It, it could have they ran into each other yeah, really. Yeah. I mean, they were both kind of playing the ball. Uh, you know, not a call I would agree with, but still, Colonel Crawford catches a break. Again, in high school, you don't get it at the point of the foul. You go back to the line of scrimmage and walk off of 15 yards, so Colonel Crawford will get it at the 30-yard line. They do get a first down out of it. And have it first and 10 at the Galleon 30. Back to throw is Steiger. Blitz is on, and he just dumped it, get, get rid of it. Greenick on a crossing pattern, but Brandon never really had much time to get rid of it as there was all kinds of orange uniforms in on him, and uh, leading the charge was uh, William Marino. Clock stopped at 4.57. Second down and 10 for Colonel Crawford. They're down 28 to nothing. Yeah, like I said, uh, Galleon Tigers got a lot of fresh uniforms out there, a lot of new faces, and uh, you know, like I said, these are good opportunities for those guys to get some playing time, and uh, you, you never know when you know somebody on your team could get injured later in the season, and uh, one of these guys is going to have to step up into that role. So obviously, the more opportunities you get to go against first time uh, first team offense is great for your defense. Weston Cochran in the backfield. It'll be Steiger though. He is a mix-up. I think they were trying to again get the ball to uh, Gabriel on the uh, end around, and that time the Galleon defender stepped in his path and knocked him down. Yeah, certainly just no place to go once again. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, Colonel Crawford been struggling with offensively, uh, you know, just too many miscommunication mistakes out there. And uh, once again, now they're stuck into a third down and long. And yeah, third and 13 air, just one for nine on third downs tonight. As they bring the play in from the sideline. Imagine we're going to see some uh, second team offense from the Galleon Tigers as well here when they get the ball back. Greenick will split out to the right. Gabriel in the slot to the left. The backs are in the eye. Galleon showing blitz, and here they come. Picked up, though, as Steiger fires it. He's got Greenick at the 15-yard line, and Tim down inside the five, it looks like. Well, he picked up the blitz that time, and Greenick with another catch tonight. He's had a boatload of catches. Out of at the line. All the way down to the nine, so it'll be a pickup. Of uh, a whole bunch. How's that for? <laughs> Helps with the stats. We're about 35. Yeah, I mean yeah. that was a, that was a great play right there. I mean Greenick, obviously he's been the main target, and uh, right now they got him on a mismatch. He was able to use some speed, get behind the smaller defender, and it was an easy pass for Steiger just to be able to throw it up. And uh, Greenick had some room, so much room, he was actually able to back pedal and just yeah. waiting for that ball to come to him, and then they were able to catch him a little bit from behind, drag him down, but still. 35-yard pickup. Great game right now for Greenick. First and goal from the nine. Steiger again wants to throw. He's running out of time, so he's going to run it himself, and he spins loose and gets some positive yardage out of it. Down to about the uh, six or seven-yard line, it looks like. Six-yard line. Pick up a three on the play. Kill second and goal from the six. Clock continues to run with 340 left to play, and it's a 28 to nothing lead for the Galleon Tigers. They scored in the first, second periods, and two in the fourth. As Steiger comes all the way to the sideline to get the play, now he has to go all the way back on. Exactly. Colonel Crawford, though, uh, doing, you know, doing a nice job marching the ball down the field right now, and they need to continue to you know, push this ball in. You're going against the second-team defense right now. You know, Nothing more humiliating than having your first-team offense stifled by the second-team defense. Ball is handed off to Cochran, and he gets down to the five. Looks like the ball might have popped loose, but I guess not. So they're going to say the four-yard line, pick up of two more on the play, but it brings up a third down and goal from the four-yard line. Galleon, of course, on the other hand, would love a shutout here. Oh, absolutely. And just imagine the confidence yeah. that will bring for your second-team defense if you can put them out on the field. You know, a lot of these guys probably JV ball players, and be able to say, hey, Here's our JV ball players, but yet they can stop the varsity offense of our opponents. Well, we're going to think about it because there's a timeout on the field with uh, 2.46 left to play again. Uh, Jeff and I will just stay here with it at uh, Heisey Park. Uh, earlier this evening, we had uh, Jeff uh, Angel off at uh, halftime, jumped to kick the 45-yard uh, field goal to uh, win a new car, but came And Steiger brings the team back out. Backs are in the eye. Greenick, the only wide receiver. He is out to the right. Steiger will take the quick drop. He wants to run with it, uh, and he's going to find nobody... You know, kind of hesitated. It looked like he was in a run, and he was in a pass, and he was in a run, and he finally ends up with a loss all the way back at the 10-yard line. Luke and Luke Diossi, the 
the son of Captain Gallion. I was going to say, I could hear his father from here. That's right. That's yeah. right. But, uh, you know, Gallion Tigers have played very nicely out there. You know, defensively, they've stepped up and made some very good, very good plays. And right there, you know, Colonel Crawford, you know, again, it's, you know, they're shooting themselves in the foot a little bit offensively. They're just very hesitant out there. Like, they're just not very uh, smooth. It's just not, it yeah. doesn't gel together right there. It was, you know, they had problems on the snap coming, you know, going from, you know, the handoff. And uh, Steiger just kind of, you know, wasn't really sure what to do with the ball there. Fourth and goal from the 10. Steiger will have to throw it. Blitz is on. They fire the ball in the toward the end zone. It's going to be caught for a touchdown. <laughs> and B, B now, I believe. Either B now or written now, or I can't tell which number it is coming off here. But they do score. And it's 89, that'll be Rittenauer. Steve Rittenauer with a 10-yard touchdown pass from Brandon Steiger. And Colonel Crawford avoids the shutout. Yep, and uh, Guy and Tiger defensively obviously just totally missed Rittenauer. He was able to just sneak out, got into that corner with nobody noticing him, and uh, Steiger was really able to loft up a soft one to him. So good job for the Colonel Crawford. Eagles get some points on the board and once again build some momentum for next week's game. He now in to attempt the point after. As soon as they get 11. Oh, they're going to go for the two-point conversion. A quick pitch and flags are down. Yeah, because you had somebody coming on late from the sideline and he was running in the direction of the line of scrimmage. Yep. And so that's an, that's motion. That's a legal motion. So they will, they were shot, kept, I don't think they got in anyway. So a guy may just decline this. Crawford trying a little uh, trickery. Of course, then, unless the whistle was before the snap. So we'll have to wait until we get it all decided here. Minute 50 is all we have left to play. B now going to drop kick. Exactly. That's what I You know. need somebody there yeah, to there hold. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. There it is. If you're going to yeah. bluff it, you know, at least have the holder over there. <laughs> <laughs> so B now with a, one of these 25-yard extra point attempt. Ball is down. Kick is up. And it's blocked. So with a minute 50 left to play, the uh, Galleon Tigers in command at 28-6. to six. As Colonel Crawford does get on the scoreboard, so they avoid the uh, shutout. But in the three games we have done, Jeff, the uh, losing teams have scored a total of 14 points. I'm telling you, you know, we're uh, three for three. Yeah. So the kick attempt here is what he got to lose with a minute 50 left. Sure. Something to work on maybe later on in the season. As the deep backs for Gallion are inside their 20 yard line, or in front of the 20 yard line, there's the kick. Oh, they are going to kick it deep. And it will drive it back. <laughs> See, somebody's happy about it. Yeah, exactly. Back of the 30-yard line, 35, and getting down it may have been uh, North. Yeah, North was the return man. He does bring it out to the 36-yard line. Let's see if the Tigers go to the bench here. And, yeah, new quarterback will be Michael Gorby. Will come out at the quarterback's bow. The minute 45 left. Just needs to take a couple of snaps. And that'll do it. Tigers go to 2-0. Colonel Crawford 0-2 next week. Uh, as I mentioned, the Gallion is at Big Walnut, while Colonel Crawford will be uh, at home against Cary. That'll be their uh, home opener next Friday night. Jeff and I make the uh, trip to uh, Upper Sandusky for the uh, NOL game. Or, excuse me, it won't be an NOL game. It'll be uh, Winford and uh, yeah, Winford and Upper Sandusky next Friday night. Mm -hmm. There we go. Gorby hands the football off. And somebody's doing a nice job of running the football. Did you pick it up? Richard Shoup, the ball carrier. Picks up yards out to the 40-yard line, so he gets about four yards on a play. Yeah, good power running right yeah. there by Richard Shoup. Minute 23 left to play. Richard Shoup, the ball carrier. Yeah, even took their PA announcer a while to figure out who it was. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Defensively, the uh, Eagles, when they're getting the signals, just line up in a straight line facing the Crawford coaching staff and yep. pass the signal in that way. That's, why didn't somebody think of that years ago? Gorby <laughs> in motion this time as another quarterback is in there. The ball is handed off. The uh, quarterback was a player not listed. And the running back is going to be Shoop again. So he brings it out to the 40. Oh, we got a flag down on the play out to the 45 yard line and got a penalty with 57 seconds left this guy
I just don't want this to be over. I'm telling you. Two and a half hour football game. Well, you know, when you get out in this type of humidity, That's maybe true. you're thinking to yourself, Let's enjoy it. this is a good opportunity for me to drop those extra pounds That's I maybe right. had picked up when I ate the pizza last yeah. night. Yeah. And now we're going to walk off 10 yards? Yeah. Wow, all right. Holding on, guys. Holding. Okay, holding on, guys. So it will be 10 yards. They're up to 75 yards in penalties. Yeah, that's see, that's been the yeah. one downside to the Galleon Tiger football team right now is obviously in this game against a team that they, they're overmatched pretty well, it's not affecting them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you go and you're facing your Bellevues and your Tiffin Columbians, you cannot have that many penalties and expect to win. So Galleon needs to snap it a couple of more times. They're going to run the ball with the mystery quarterback, and he goes down back at the 30-yard line. Be a loss back to the 30, as I said, loss of 10 on the play. Can't really tell if that was actually supposed to be a rollout with the yeah. quarterback or if it was just a broken play because uh, it looked so bad that uh, ended up just going down to the ground. Well, you don't need to snap it again as we're down to uh, 10 seconds. So the Galleon Tigers go 2-0, and Colonel Crawford 0-2, and, and the Tigers win the third straight battle between uh, Galleon and Colonel Crawford. The final score tonight at Heisey Park in Galleon. The Galleon Tigers 28, Colonel Crawford Eagles nothing, and we'll wrap it up after this. A baker's makes the perfect pizza.